you don't have to deal with the space. But when, if you just let it go and just kind of think bigger, it's the same. It's just, just slower, you know. Like eighth notes. How to phrase an eighth note so that it, it's an eighth note, but it's not like... <laughs> so it's not like that. And what usually happens for drummers, we're so far behind everybody else. If we get a chance to solo at a tempo like that, this is what you hear. One, two, three. phrasing language that we're locked into. Why? Because that's all we've practiced, that's all we know, and that's we've never bothered to dig into how to approach it another way. For example, um, at a real slow tempo but man if you're in it it's just it's like a whole world that we don't drummers especially but all y'all you know open that door and go down it because man if you don't have to you don't have to work so hard it's easy once you just grasp that tempo and not think about I mean um, there was a time, uh, you all know who Bill Evans is, right? The pianist. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a time, um, he was looking for a drummer. And I heard about it, and I had a connection to audition for him. And I went to hear the band uh, play. And they played a ballad, like um, Body and Soul. And within two measures, he's double timing and rushing, and they haven't even gotten through the melody. And then by the time they get to the, they finish the chorus, they're triple timing. And they did this the whole night, and it was like I didn't even, I didn't even bother. I didn't even uh, bother to try to audition or anything. It was just like, wow, I don't want to do that. And and because um, I knew there was another way, and I've heard him do it, and and I I didn't want to do that. And um, and when I hear people that actually do, if you're playing a ballad, play a ballad and make you know put your heart into it, just as much as if you're playing something funky, you know, like a, a hip hop beat or, or a groove. It's the same, you can put that same kind of intensity into these slow tempos. And a blues, I mean, if you're on a gig and say there's a guest singer that wants to come up and they're a blues singer, they're not going to call Now's the Time like this. They're not going to do that. They're going to uh, want blues, B flat. One, two. That'll be the up-tempo version. Okay. And usually, or, uh, somebody that's really, they'll, they'll, it'll be more like one.
one, but that that kind of tempo, and you don't you don't go anywhere with it. You just like just let it sit and let it groove there. And to, it's so simple, but it takes a lot of concentration. A lot of concentration. If you don't believe me, try it. <laughs> and 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 it's great. Once you do it, there's nothing better than hearing. Like you got a great sound on, on when you let those low strings go, man. That's there's nothing like hearing that, you know. What no matter what instrument, when you hear like that, those notes just growling at the right time and at the right place. Wow, it's so easy, and you don't have to. It's easy to. It's very easy for a listener to process what's going on. Because it's not just intellectual classroom bullshit. It's like real. <laughs> right? <laughs> so um, in your repertoire, whether you perform it or not, um, take a chance. Tr try something in, in that tempo where you commit to that tempo. It doesn't have to be 10 minutes like Jorge was saying. Tell a story in just a few choruses. And, and the way you guys, I asked you to do backgrounds, yeah, if you're playing in a group and, you know, bass solo is playing, play underneath the bass some backgrounds for them. She was asking for it. 